Hello students, in this video we'll see how to use Taylor series to evaluate particular infinite series. Here's our first example. Let's consider sum n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n pi over 3 to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. We want to evaluate this infinite series. We can check to see if the series converged by using the ratio test or any sort of, or the root test. But we can observe that what we have here is we can recall that the sine of x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So our series over here is exactly equal to the sine of x where x has been replaced with pi over 3. We know that the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And so this series converges to root 3 over 2. Let's look at another example. Let's find the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of the natural log of 2 to the n over n factorial. Here what we can do is we can recall that e to the x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Now the difference between our sum and the exponential sum is that the exponential sum starts at 0. What we can do is we can write this as 1 plus the sum n goes from 1 to infinity by plugging out the first term in the sum, x to the n over n factorial. And therefore what this tells us, this tells us that e to the x minus 1, if I throw the negative 1 on the other side, is the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. So what we have here is we have the Taylor expansion for the function e to the x minus 1. So what this, what this series will converge to is this will converge to e to the log of 2 minus 1. And e to the log of 2 is just 2, so this is going to be 2 minus 1, so the series will converge to 1. And let's look at one final example of this. Let's find the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n times 1 half to the power n. What we can do for this is that we don't have a common form, but if there was no n here, we'd be close to a geometric series. So let's note that 1 over 1 minus x is the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And now if we take the derivative of this expression, d by dx, what we'll get is we'll get that 1 over 1 minus x squared. So that's the, deri the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x is 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared is equal to the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of n x to the n minus 1. And we can shift the indices and write this as the sum and I want to add 1 to n over here, so what happens is when n is equal to 0, we don't have anything. So this becomes n goes from 1 to infinity of n times x to the n minus 1. And now we'll shift the summation, so we'll write this as the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of n plus 1, and then x to the n. And so we see what this is over here. So this, of course, is just the sum in two parts. n goes from 0 to infinity of n x to the n plus the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this sum over here goes to 1 over 1 minus x. And this sum over here can start at 1. So this tells us that the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n times x to the n is equal to the derivative of this expression, so it's 1 over 1 minus x squared, 
and then I have to subtract off this term over here, minus 1 over 1 minus x. And so if we give this a common denominator, this will be 1 over 1 minus x squared minus 1 minus x over 1 minus x squared. And the 1 will cancel, so we'll just get that this expression over here is equal to x over 1 minus x quantity squared. And of course we'll plug in the value 1 half to this, so the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n times 1 half to the n will be equal to 1 half over 1 minus 1 half squared. So this is equal to a half, and then this is going to be a half squared, which is a quarter, so I have a half over a quarter. And a half over a quarter is equal to 2. So the sum in question over here is equal to 2. So by using properties of Taylor's series, differentiation, integration, and shifting indices, we're able to find values of infinite series by appealing to the Taylor series formulas. Thank you very much.